I wanted to put up a quick video on five streamer bot basics that everyone should know when using this application. At least in my opinion. I think you should know them. If you disagree, well, I guess then, you know, you go make a video. <laughs> Anyway, without any intro whatsoever, we are going to jump right into this. So number one, creating commands. Commands are things that we can use to trigger actions by typing into our chat, having viewers type into our chat, or having our bots send messages to the chat. You can create these by going into the commands tab, right clicking and selecting add. In the add command box on the left you can name your command which is not what is used to trigger the action but rather how you identify what this command does then in the commands box you can type the command that will be used as the trigger you can set multiple trigger words here by placing them all on separate lines. So if you want it to be uh, exclamation point add, exclamation point adds, exclamation point added, you would put those all on separate lines. Get what I'm saying? Of course you do. You can also add commands to groups to better organize things. So if you have commands for users, subs, mods, or commands that perform things like sounds or text to speech or overlays, etc. You can create a grouping to be able to find them easier if you ever want to edit them later on. Options, sources, and cooldowns are self-explanatory. If you do have questions regarding those fields, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. To the right side in the permissions, you can set it to grant or deny permission to people. I suggest leaving it on grant always because depending on what you put in, it automatically denies everyone else that's not permitted. So yeah, it just kind of works out. In group permissions, you can set it to allow everyone by not selecting anything. Set it to allow only moderators, subscribers, or VIPs, or add all three if you want to allow all of the above. If you leave those out and go to user permissions, you can look up and allow specific users while denying everyone else permission to that action. Cool? Cool. The next one is channel point rewards. If you click on platforms under Twitch, you will find channel point rewards. Here you can control any and all channel point rewards created or owned by StreamerBot. In order to control a channel point reward in StreamerBot, it has to have ownership of that channel point reward. To take ownership of previously created rewards made through Twitch, just duplicate them inside of StreamerBot and disable or delete the original. To create a new reward, just right click and choose add. And then in the add menu, you can set the name choose whether it is enabled or disabled or paused, set the cost of the reward, and choose whether user input is required. This allows users to write in a comment or chat message rather when they redeem the reward. You can set the color of the reward, whether or not the reward skips your redemption queue, max uses per stream, or maximum amount of times each user can redeem it per stream. So if you only want the reward to be able to be used one time, you can set that number to one. If you only want each user to be able to use it one time, you can set reward per user to one. You get it. You can alternatively set a global cooldown so that the reward can only be used every so often, but multiple times. So if you set the global cooldown to uh, 5,000 milliseconds, then the reward can only be used every five seconds. This is all really easy to understand, and I don't know why I'm asking if you get it. You get it. You're smart. You know what's going on. I'm going to skip over the persists because that isn't very basic. So, bye. Sorry. You can also set your rewards to groups once again keeping streamer bot organized. Trust me, you should always do this. You'll thank me later. The third on the list is timed actions. 
If you click on settings and go to timed actions, you can create timers that will be used to trigger actions based on how much time has passed in a stream or how many chat messages have been sent during a stream. In fact, you can set it to both or even randomize it. You can also set it so that it repeats infinitely or only occurs once per stream. If you do set both a time interval and a lines requirement, which is how many chat messages have been received during that stream, you will need to reach both of those for it to trigger. In other words, if you have a 10 second requirement and a 10 lines requirement, even if 10 seconds passes, it will not trigger the action until the 10 chat messages is also met. Number four, cleaning up your lists. If you go into your settings and then go to the user interface tab, you can disable sub actions and triggers that you will never use. You can turn off entire groups or individual options within groups. So if you are never going to use Polypop or Slobs or Trovo, you can turn all of those off to eliminate them and any excessive unnecessary options when you're setting things up in StreamerBot. So when you go into create an action and you right click in the sub actions list and you get all of those options that you're just never gonna use, disabling them here will remove them from that list, leaving you with only things that you might use. So nice. I love that they added that in. I am a huge fan. To the right of that, you can do the same thing for triggers. So if you are never going to use Slobs or Elgato or Trovo or Crowd Control or Kofi or blah, 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 blah. You can just turn all of that off so that when you go right click in the triggers box looking for a trigger, you don't have all that junk that you're never gonna need. It's not clogged up with things that you will never use. You're welcome. Which brings us to the last one. Number five, triggers. Almost everything can be used as a trigger. If you right click inside of the triggers box on any action that you've created, you will see a list of all of the things you can use to trigger that action. On a general basis, I would always suggest adding a test trigger to your actions so that as you build your action, you can make sure things are working the way you want them to. Another good idea is to take advantage of the favorites tab or sector, whatever you want to call it. You can go to any trigger in the list of triggers and right click it, which will add it to the list of favorites. So after you have a good idea of things you will use quite regularly, and have favorited them all, you will only ever need to open the triggers menu and go to the favorites list. And there's everything you're ever gonna need. Okay, now for trigger options that are going to be the most popular. Test can be found under core, and once added, you can right click it and click test to manually trigger any action. Commands can also be found under core if you go to core, commands, command triggered. This will give you a list where you can find every command you have created. And once added, that command will trigger the action you have assigned it to. Channel point rewards is located under Twitch, channel rewards, reward, redemption. So for any of the channel point rewards that you create inside of StreamerBot, you can create a trigger on an action, and that's what that channel point reward will do. You get what I'm saying right I, I hope so because that confused even me so if you wanted to let your viewers turn off your camera you would create an action that turns off your camera and then create a channel point reward called camera off and then set that as the trigger for that action is that a better explanation I think so I, I understood that timed actions is also found under core so if you click inside of the triggers box and then go to core you'll see timed actions. And once added, you simply select the timer you created from the list. And then based on the timer's criteria, your action will trigger when those requirements are met. Boom, nailed it, that's it, that's the tweet. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, please leave a comment down below. Or come let me know on Twitch. I go live every uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you found the information in this video helpful, 
please like it. I like you for doing that. If you want to hear even more cool things you can do with StreamerBot, OBS, a mirror, some vegetables, a camera, and an internet connection, please consider subscribing to my channel. I am insane and you will love it here. Or grow to despise me and then tell me about how I traumatized you on stream. Whatever. <laughs> It is what it is. I would like to thank you all very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. And as always, take care and stay safe.